All right, everybody, I got another project for the workshop. Let's check it out. And no, it's not this nice little E6 I've had forever. It's what it's pulling. And it is pulling a really nice third rail brass B70A Pennsylvania theater scenery car. And this came out a few years back. They made a um, a couple numbers of this and I found this at York. It's it's in need of a little bit of work as usual I don't really buy anything unless it needs a little bit of TLC so We'll uh, take this thing into the shop and I'll uh, show you what it's all about So from my readings the Pennsylvania Railroad had about 44 of these and they were used to uh, travel the country transporting scenery props for theater plays and stuff like that. And I am far from a varnish expert. Um, I do like to have some passenger equipment. And when I find something unique like this, it's it's awesome to get a hold of. Like I said, these there weren't many of these made. And uh, I was just really excited to get this. P plus it's brass. So, I mean, that's really neat in itself. So what made these cars unique as far as a prototype is that they had these large end doors for loading bulky um, scenic props, I guess. And I can't get the center door open, but it, it's, it's like kind of semi-permanently attached under here. But this just gives you an idea what the, uh, what the end of the car looks like. Here's the other end. I just like to show the detail of the diaphragms and stuff. And as you can see, it has just regular three rail couplers. So I'll be changing those out for Katie's. And, uh, I'm gonna fix a couple little paint dingers on here, but there isn't much to deal with. Um, and I'm gonna give it kind of a, a, a lightweight weathering job just to fit in with uh, my passenger trains. And I think this will look pretty cool. I'm gonna do a little bit more research on how they were put into a consist. Um, and uh, I will probably use this with my express cars and head end cars like that. And uh, probably have the T1 pull it around for a bit. So here's a nice book um, for head-end cars. Uh, this was a Bob Lillistrand book, and I don't know where you find these anymore, but there was a, a time when he was coming to the uh, Ypsilanti show here in Michigan once a year, and uh, you're able to pick these up. So if you can find these, sometimes you can get them for less than 20 bucks. They're a nice handy reference for, uh, for stuff like this. Highly recommended. So just looking it over, it's not in bad shape at all. Uh, I got this car from the same collection that those crusty GLAs came from. And uh, this is pretty much relatively unmolested compared to those cars, that's for sure. So there's a couple of rub marks on the roof, but with some light weathering and dull coating, that's gonna go away. Really nice looking car. There's the three rail couplers. These are gonna go. There seems to be some kind of KD adapter that's obviously missing. I didn't get the original boxes with this car, so Let's see if I can uh, figure out what it needs for adapters. That Lilla Strand book's gonna be very helpful for looking at the uh, couplers. All right, so the couplers were pretty easily removed. I kind of figured out this uh, arrangement of the end doors. It's kind of cool. Just like the prototype, these kind of accordion. It's really neat. All right. So I got the uh, KD adapters figured out. I went through a couple iterations. Um, the first time I just had these through holes and then I realized I'd be better off with some slots. If you notice, they're at two different heights. Um, the door end, I definitely had to shim down further and then the regular uh, diaphragm end here was a little shallower. So you see I have my masking job on already. So here's the other one. And the final 
ones actually just had longer slots so I could play with the fore aft placement of the uh, of the uh, draft gear. So I don't think I'm gonna mess with these anymore. There's that um, kind of receptacle hole down there just below the uh, draft gear. I believe that's for like a Barco steam heat connection and I don't have any of those right now. That, that's a PSC part. I kind of use those on my M1B project. But I don't have any right now in the shop. I don't know if I'm going to chase that out. I don't know if anybody would ever notice that. But I think we're almost ready to just give this a little Windex job and uh, prep it for some, some weathering. All right, so I have a dust coat of uh, dull coat on now. And I'm going to do a little bit of uh, wash here and there and uh, I do it with acrylics see my really bad masking job let's get to it So as you can see, I'm into the initial washing process. And the idea here is I'm using water-based tube acrylics over the dull coat. And I like to use water-based tube acrylics because it won't attack the dull coat or burn through. And um, when I do a car like this, I'll do it in sections. As you can see, here I am just laying on the, uh, the wash. I'll use tube acrylics, uh, black and white, and maybe sometimes a little bit of brown. A little bit of uh, Windex can sometimes help with the flow and as you can see mostly downward motions when I'm applying the wash and then taking it off and I'll just repeat this process over and over again till I'm happy maybe the secondary effect of this too is getting a, a slight haze out of it you can see that sort of grimy haze on the left end of the car compared with the right end as that haze sort of sets up you can then start applying more washes in in, in different intensities and you can sort of layer effects like right now I'm, I'm actually just trying to put a shadow line underneath that seam that runs across the uh, length of the car these are fairly simple weathering techniques and they're easy to control i find that they work very well on a factory painted piece like this here i am using one of these ak weathering pencils just to kind of low light the seams on this door and now I'm moving on to the last section on this side of the car they work great for putting a shadow line underneath a seam like this. And you can see I'm putting a little bit of um, water on it, just using a wet brush, just to activate the color and then wiping it off. And then you, you can get like a nice shadow under the seam and some nice streaking. Here I'm just using a finer brush just to get some dark wash into the corners of this door. A hair dryer can also be used to help store your paint efforts to memory a little quicker. This is progress on the other side of the car. And one thing I tried to do was use these AK weathering pencils to help accentuate these sunken panels. And this was kind of an experiment. So I would just draw them in with, with the pencil following the seams and then use a little bit of water here just to activate the, the paint from that paint pencil. And I found this was a, a pretty cool way to get those seams popped a lot quicker. And as usual, I put some on and take some off till I'm happy with the way it looks. So at this stage, I'm going to start airbrushing the running gear and the frame. And normally I do this with grimy black as just the first pass. And uh, right now though, I'm experimenting with some Tamiya German Gray, which I found is real close to grimy black. And it could be a candidate for uh, my Model Master Grimy Black replacement, I, I, I found I was really happy with the uh, results. Um, it's been a lot of work trying to get used to all these different paints. You know, I'm trying Tamiya and I'm trying some um, Vallejo uh, Model Air and I'm still trying to find like something that acts like Model Masters. I really like that paint a lot and I'm gonna probably continue to cry about it. So you can see I'm just 
applying the uh, just kind of a dust coat of grimy black. Nice thing about shooting acrylics, I mean, see, I'm, I'm handling this thing with bare hands. The paint dries so quickly, especially the model masters. Everything else seems a little different to me. Um, the Tamiya stuff seemed a little more tacky than um, model masters, which seemed to dry so quick. You can see it's this isn't a very scientific process. We're just trying to dull everything down and just impart sort of a, um, a, a grimy haze over all the running gear. Same concept for the car ends in regards to the wash. You can see I'm just putting the wash on with a, a, a fairly wide flat brush. So one of the reasons why you want to do a wash after a dull coat or at least the way I do it, is I'm actually using the dull coat as sort of a uh, tooth for uh, the washing effects. This really helps the wash stick to the different surfaces better, and it, it definitely helps it hang into the uh, cracks and recesses uh, of, a, um, of a model. And just like the car sides, I put some on, take some off, just keep doing it till I think it looks just about right. Just using my airbrush here to dry the end a little bit to see what things are looking like. This is how I can work kind of quick. So I just use the airbrush to dry it and then now I'm just pulling back and letting out some paint just to kind of dust up the end a little bit. I think it may try this German gray a little bit more in the future on some other cars. I'm really intrigued with it. I think it, it might be a viable candidate for my uh, grimy black. Now I'm just striping the roof a little bit. I don't go too overboard on the roof of these cars too much. I'll just um, kind of try to avoid the zebra stripe look. So at this point, I'm doing a little bit of dry brushing, um, starting off on the running gear. And on the running gear, I'll use anything from a light gray to a light brown. You basically just want to use any color that's lighter than the base color and then also makes sense for the environment the details live in. Dry brushing is such a great multi-purpose technique. When applied to running gear or any other details that live in shadow, it just helps bring attention to details that might be lost in the darkness. When used on a car side like this, it can be used to represent rain streaks or faded paint. It's also great on the car ends like this where you want to pop all these details. So I think uh, Juliet here is just about ready for service. So we've got our 3D printed uh, KD adapters and we got some nice KD 805s mounted. I got a nice coat of dull coat on it, followed up with some targeted washing and some general overwash. And um, I got to experiment with a little bit of my uh, Tamiya German Gray, which is a candidate to uh, replace my Model Masters Grimy Black. And uh, just some minor dry brushing at the end just to help pop some details and to do some rain streaking. So also got to use my AK weathering pencils again. And yeah, I hope it doesn't look overdone, but I wanted to accentuate these uh, panels a bit, you know. And uh, I think we're ready. I've got another nice car to uh, follow up on this one with. I got a, I got a nice um, RPO car, brass one. That'll be the next project.